Please join me in the prayer of confession. For you so love the world, oh God, that you came among us to feel our pain, amplify our joy, and bless our broken stories. For you so love the world, oh God, that you are among us still, calling us by your Spirit to follow the way of your love. Forgive us when we do not listen, O oh God, when we forget the love that you have for us and the love we are called to share with one another. Forgive us, three in one, God, and let your love transform our lives. Have you known? Have you heard? Our God lifts us up and strengthens us so that we won't be weary. The burden of sin is but a far and distant memory for through Christ our sins, all of them, are forgiven. God is great in strength, mighty in power, and full of endless love for us all. Please be seated. The New Testament lesson today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. It can be found in your pew Bibles in, on page 158. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if the children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him.
this point, I want to call the attention to Team Jesus, the children and uh, others in our congregation. I brought with me some bags that if you had, we, so that each one could have a snack. There's some checks in this bag, and there's some pieces of rye bread in this bag, and some pretzels in this bag, and some uh, some other kinds of uh, uh, pretzel kind of looking things in this bag. And so they're all separate. We could each have a nice, uh, a nice little treat. But what happens if we all put our snack together and we mixed them all together then we would have a nice trail mix that we could share right well tomorrow is memorial day and memorial day we rec remember we remember the sacrifices that people made in order to make sure that we live a free life so just like if we wanted to make a trail mix we'd each have to sacrifice our separate tree in order to uh, create that trail mix. All kinds of different people in over the course of the time of our nation have made sacrifices so that we would have freedom, that we would have a nice mix of freedom that we could share together and celebrate. And that, those sacrifices are what we're going to celebrate tomorrow when we remember the people that gave up themselves to make sure that our nation lived free and in the abundance that our nation provides for most of its citizens. So, so tomorrow you might have a cookout or you might go on a picnic, but remember, a lot of people made a sacrifice and gave their lives so that we could live in a nation free and uh, uh, able to celebrate and able to live in abundance. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the glory of your love, for the abundance of uh, our uh, lives here in this country, and for the sacrifices that our friends over the generations have made so that we might live that freedom that we celebrate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We come now to the place where we share uh, the lesson for the day. It's actually an Old Testament scripture lesson today from the prophet Isaiah. And we share from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. And we're going to share uh, verses uh, 1 through 8. Hear now the blessing of God's word before us. Amen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called uh, and the house of the Lord filled with smoke and said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth and with it said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then 
I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go before us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go and say to the people the words that I tell you. Here ends this blessed reading that comes from the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with the blessing of your love shining on our path, and we pray that you would guide our footsteps, that we might honor you, that we might feel your glorious hand always leading us. In the name of our Savior, we ask your blessing. Amen. My friends, today, I want to focus on Isaiah's situation in this chapter of his prophecy. Isaiah encounters these creatures that have all kinds of wings, seraphs. And so he's terrified, he's frightened, he has never seen anything like this before. Isaiah, in his mind, in this situation, has no other alternative than to offer himself unto the Lord. For a, for Isaiah, and I believe for you and me, for us, the beginning of redemption comes from the truth of that quote in Isaiah. It says, our guilt is taken away and our sins are atoned for. For us, in our journeys, because Jesus died on the cross, ultimately, we are not different from Isaiah, though. If we are attentive to the call of the Spirit, I believe that just like Isaiah, we too will hear the voice of God's call, asking the question, Whom shall I send? And so, opening the door for what God hopes that our response will be. And what is that response? Here am I. Here am I, Lord, send me. For you and me, the cross that Jesus died on takes our guilt away and forgives us of our sin. That blessing opens the door for you and me that we might tune our hearts to the voice of God and the spirits leading in our lives so that with our words, so that with our lives, so that with our hearts, we might respond to just like Isaiah responded. Here I am, Lord, send me. If you have a purpose of love, send me. If you have a purpose of mercy, send me. In a way, you have already responded. You are here. You are worshiping. You are raising your hand to participate in the redemption that Jesus Christ has brought before us. You have said, here I am. In a sense, that's the easy part. It's easy to say, here I am. But those next few words, that next little phrase is where it gets a little trickier. Here I am. That's easy. But to say, send me on whatever mission of mercy that you have in store for me. To make the sacrifice required by that commitment. That's the difficult part of our faith. 
raising your hand in the face of challenge and risk, volunteering when it means giving up your time and your resources that are generally reserved for fulfilling your own needs and your own desires. Yet, God wants to hear that phrase from each one of us. Yeah, those words sent me, they come with a price. And sometimes a high price. But in the gospel, the scripture tells us that the reward of raising your hand and saying, here I am, send me. The reward of serving God always outweighs the price that we might pay. God has a challenge and a purpose and a place for every single one of our lives. A place for each one of us to answer that call. Here I am, send me. For each one of his precious children. Those two little words, send me, have a way of becoming the way that we bear the fruit that God ordained us to bear. The fruit which ultimately brings glory to God, which is our God-given purpose. When we, with our whole hearts and our spirits, stand up. And say, send me, Lord, each day, asking the question, here I am. And then, where would you send me? It's like climbing a mountain, going through the effort to climb a mountain. And then, when you're at the top, when you're at the peak, and you look over that peak for the very first time. And you see all of the bounty of God, the beauty in the valley below and the green and the freshness in the valley below. That's what it's like. That's the reward of saying, here I am, send me. Because we see the glory of God and the fulfillment of servanthood in his name. A willingness to journey with God opens that door that can't be entered any other way Beside trusting in God's glory. It's a door opened by the key. Send me, Lord. Use me for your purpose in the world. Send me. And when we use that key, when we say those words and go forward according to God's plan, then we begin to understand things we didn't understand before. Things that seemed foolish before seem very important in the light of those two words sent me. And things that seemed so important before seem not as important as we thought. I believe that the willingness to every day of your journey respond, send me, shines a light where darkness has only perhaps been in our lives. This weekend, we celebrate Memorial Day. It's a day set aside to remember those who have made a sacrifice so that we might live in freedom and liberty. That we might live in the abundance that America provides for most of its citizens. We recognize those who made sacrifices because they loved us and because they loved our country. But we also today recognize our God. Our God who gave us his son. Because our God loves us. By virtue of our Savior who said from the cross, forgive them, Father. By virtue of the price that Jesus paid at Calvary, we are like Isaiah. And we approach the throne of God with the assurance that our sins have been redeemed. Today, we are able
able to stand before the throne of God, our robes washed as white as snow. And I believe in so many ways we hear the voice of God in our journeys saying, whom shall I send? And who shall go before us? Many of us have responded. Here I am, Lord. Send me by helping with the mission work of our church. By helping with the mission programs, including our prayers for those who are hungry in our community. Praying for the communities that have received the benefits of the mission support that we have brought forward. Praying that each of God's children might see Christ through the love and the prayers of each ministry that we undertake. Those are some just obvious ways that we commonly choose to respond to the Lord's call, Whom shall I send? But I want to place a challenge before us today. Because I believe that because the Spirit has shared this passage with us today, God is calling us to pay a special attention on every day that we walk in His life. To hear the voice of God calling us, directing our lives. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God's voice is calling out, Whom shall I send? I feel like we, within the ministry of this church, are being called as God's people to listen. Especially close to all of the opportunities for God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's compassion. All of the opportunities that we have to respond. Here I am, Lord. Here we are, Lord, send us for whatever good and righteous purpose that you have in store. Send us. Use us as instruments of love and grace and hope for our community. I believe that today we have to decide to be a bit more open to the possibilities that the words, whom shall I send? The possibility that those words might be calling you and me, might be addressing your life and my life and the ministry of this community of faith. Those words might be calling us to more effectively love and care for and hope together as a response of God's love, the fruit we are called to bear to the community around us. As in Isaiah, our God has touched our lips and has taken our guilt away. What price could we pay that would be too high a price for that? He has touched our lips and taken our guilt away. That we might stand before God and hear His voice. Our sin has been atoned for. So hear the voice of the Lord this very day. Just as significantly as the prophet heard the Lord's voice long ago. Those words say, Whom shall I send? The possibilities are endless. Whom shall I send to feed those who are hungry in our community? To fellowship with those in our community who are alone and who have been alone, particularly in the clutches of this pandemic. Whom shall I send to pray for and to love and to minister to those in our community who are hurting? 
whom shall I send? Join me today that we might respond to the Lord's calling with a new sense of urgency, a new sense of vigor, a new sense of the Spirit within us. Join me as we respond together with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise in our hearts because our sins have been atoned for and we have felt the blessing of God's hand touch us as a people of God. Here I am, Lord. Here we are, Lord. Send us. Let us be determined disciples as we humble ourselves before God in prayer, ready to serve. Here we are, Lord. Send us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we humbly come before you and give you thanks and offer our hearts in praise. We ask that you help us to read through this prophecy one more time and find the details and feel the redemption that comes from our God in all of his mercy. Here we are, Lord. Touch us as we pray. Touch us as we serve. Touch us as we hope together in Touch us as we celebrate the gift of salvation given by the mercy and the glory of our Savior Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. We come now to the place in our worship where we join and sing the hymn number 525. Here I am.
Please be seated. We come now to the place during our time of worship where we prepare our hearts for the time that we spend in prayer. A couple of things I want to call to your attention. Uh, uh, Joyce King has been having some health problems. She is in a, uh, a care center undergoing physical therapy. I uh, want to keep Dorothy Gift in our prayers, Martha Green, Dave Chapman, Carol Poplick, uh, Robert DeVries, Clint Dykhoff, Gary Lovestead, Dylan Preston, and Jackie Williams. Uh, Terry Vincent is uh, prepared to go and have some tests uh, to his, uh, with his cardiologist, so, and he also has shingles. We want to keep him in our prayers. And for the family of Mary Newton, who passed away earlier this week, uh, are there other uh, joys or concerns? We should keep our prayers in the hearts, or in our hearts, for all those who are graduating. Uh, Dennis, Mitch Gould as he recovers from COVID. So Mitch Gould uh, as as he recovers from COVID. For those who might not have heard, others. He's walking around. Others. Oh, Diana De Bailey. Is she recovered from a broken arm? Wow. Diana De Bailey, a broken arm. We want to keep her in our prayers. Others? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Living Lord of love and truth, grace and hope, help us that we might hear the call of the Lord on each day that we are blessed with the Lord's presence and each day that we feel the redeeming love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to feel compassion for those who we have been called to pray for today. We ask that as Joyce King goes through therapy, that you would empower her to regain her strength and, and uh, her spirit, that she might return home. We ask, Lord, that you'd be with Dorothy Gift, recovering from a procedure on her on her arm. Martha Green, just walk with her as she goes through cancer treatments. Uh, we ask that you'd continue to be with uh, Dave Chapman, uh, with Carol Pavlik residing at Hope Creek, just care for her. Robert DeVries and Clint Dykoff, just help each of these, your children, know that Christ is by their sides with every step that they take, uh, redeeming them and loving them and healing them. We ask, Lord, that you'd be with Clint Dykoff and Gary Lovestead and Dylan Preston. Just help each child of God to see the light of Christ shining on the path before them so that there might be hope and healing and love. We ask, Lord, that you would be with uh, Jackie Williams. Uh, be with all of the graduates, Lord. We ask that you would shine your light on our path as we seek to be the witnesses that you have called us to be as we embrace the call, whom shall I send? We ask, Lord, that you would be with the ministries of the food pantries that we support and be uh, with the Ministry of World Relief, our mission program, that uh, the things that we collect might uh, bring uh, a light to the lives of those who are refugees resettling in our community and that those gifts might be an expression of your love. We ask that you be with Terry Vincent as he goes through uh, tests on his heart and, and uh, uh, the shingles, Lord, just... Uh, Hold him up and help him to see the light uh, that shines on his path, and knowing that you are by his side through a difficult time. We ask that you be with the family of Mary Newton and her passing. Just uh, grant them peace and hope, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you be with uh, Diana the Bailey. Heal that broken arm that she might uh, move forward with joy in her heart. We ask that you be with Mitch Gould as he recovers from COVID. And uh, be with all of those who are affected by COVID in one way or another. That uh, as we sort of turn back to normal, we might not forget those who have lost loved ones and those who have suffered. That we might continue to keep those folks in our prayers and that we might continue and love to love and support uh, all of our friends uh, uh, and all of our neighbors with the light of Christ. Lord, be in our community. Help us 
to care for those around us. Be in our world that where there is corruption and division, that you might replace those things with peace and love. Lord, we pray now the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, we come to the place now where we dedicate the offerings that have come before us this week. and sing hymn number 564.
friends, peace be in your hearts as we go. And as we reflect on the sacrifices that have been made by those who have come before us, may we embrace the peace and the liberty that they bring us on this day and forevermore in the light of our great God forever and ever. Amen.